Hello guys, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we're going to be checking out a new aircraft, for me anyway, the Shock Ultra, which is sort of a very nice looking bush plane, which I believe has some sort of G1000 or some sort of very fancy avionics uh, cockpit, which will be interesting. And we're going to head, continue on the coast of the Adriatic coast in Croatia, flying from Dubrovnik, and we've got a bit of a uh, sort of waypoint set here with a few little uh, sort of points of interest, particularly birds again. We've got some seagulls near Devat, uh, if that's how I pronounce it, and then we've got some geese as well near this lovely, fantastic lake here before heading into our planned stop for the day. This is part of my world tour series. As I say, I'm gonna be showing some of this off. My plan actually after that is to head west uh, into Italy so we can check out the Amalfi Coast and uh, Naples as well as a few other points of interest uh, which will be fantastic over here. Um, it's just so much to see and do in this sim even though VR is not ready yet it's plenty to be getting on with in my opinion. Right anyway I'll see you in the aircraft in a moment. So here we are at Lima Delta Delta Uniform where I uh, sort of landed a few days ago. Do you know some people hate this music I absolutely love it. I think it um, really gives you a sense of drama and, you know, an occasion. <laughs> I think it's great. And finally, you'd be pleased to know I've changed my tail number um, to VR Flight Sim Guy. Very, uh, <laughs> very original there. But anyway, I've never flown this aircraft before. Oh, that's a bit of a surprise. I expect it to have a very fancy sort of touchscreen panel. That must be another bush play I'm thinking of. But anyway, now that I'm in the cockpit and this is the first time being in here, I need to set up some views. So I'd actually like, in fact, I'd imagine there's, yeah, there's quite a, quite a nice view there anyway, set up. But I would like my own particular view of just being a little bit higher up, a bit closer. I often do this with many of the aircraft. And then I press Control, Alt and 1. And then maybe another one. Where I'm sort of looking out towards the right wing. That's a nice view there. Control Alt 2. And then another one view that side. Control Alt 3. So now I've got three nice quick snap views there. And maybe one, it's not a lot in this aircraft to really bother with, but maybe a really zoomed in view of some of these uh, dials here. There we go. That's quite useful actually. So that could be Control Alt 4. So there we are. I really like that feature there. Brilliant. So we'll put our battery on then. What we've got down here? Fuel pump. Oh, listen to these sounds. Mixture fully rich. Uh, set the altimeter. By the way, if you're not sure what the altimeter is, just uh, hold B. It's a bit of a cheat, but it's very useful. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably it, is it? I don't know. Is that the uh, turn on turbo? Oh, that sounds good. Maybe we'll do that later. Check that out. <laughs> Um, choke, but yes, we need a bit of that. Of course, if you're not sure what to do, there's a very nice sort of checklist system as well that will work. Magnetos need to be on. I think that's probably about it. So we'll go back to our view that we've just set up. Whoops, that one there. And shout clear, prop. Here we go. Ooh, that sounds interesting. It, you can hear, actually, straight away of a whine to the engine. That reminds me of one of my old bikes. I had uh, gear-driven cams. <laughs> Very mechanical sound. Looks like a, there is a turbo in there somewhere. Very nice. Have a look outside here. What a very nice looking little beast of an aircraft actually. I think it's going to be a lot of fun today. So we're heading in that direction there. Look at that. Even the uh, traffic, although they're a little bit annoying at times, like the way they move around and the tyres and sort of how they lean into the corners, you can see the physics are actually working on the ground traffic as well as uh, in your aircraft. Look at that actually, as I zoom in here, a really beautiful view there of that engine. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, that's my first screenshot right there. This sim, honestly, I've got about a gig's or more worth of screenshots already. It's terrible. 
I might even, I was actually thinking about putting that in a separate video, a sort of slideshow video of all my screenshots, you know, that I've taken. It might be a bit boring, but you know, a bit like a photo album as such. Right, let's just check ATIS, and what I'll do is, I'll meet you at the end of the runway, so I'll see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back guys, we've just got our takeoff clearance. I don't think we're going to need any flaps at all, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, just for the sake of the fact that I haven't flown this aircraft yet, I'm going to dump some flaps down. Oh, down there, look, that's interesting. Uh, because I've got a feeling this thing is going to literally take off pretty much in its own length. Here we go. Not quite, but... We are now airport already, so that's pretty amazing. Wowzers, let's have a look outside. Absolutely beautiful view there of the Adriatic coast. And Dubrovnik is over there. We just need to uh, adjust that trim wheel. Got to say, guys, I highly recommend the Cytec trim wheel. I've had this now for oh, five years, six years. I don't know, even more than that. And uh, it's as important to me as the yoke uh, that I'm using. It's fantastic. I don't really like sort of setting up your trim on switches. I, I really like a sort of analog feeling wheel. I'm not listening to ATC as a surprise. Right, this doesn't have a GPS as such, and we're not really dead reckoning because we're rubbish today. So what we're going to do is just use the VFR map, which I actually have never really used before um, yet in about 50 hours of using this sim now. But I think today is the day where we're just going to use it to check our course, only because there are certain locations that we want to go to uh, to check out these birds. There we are, we're saying goodbye to Dubrovnik. And we'll sort of uh, continue, continue uh, along this coastline here. We're not going to follow this uh, particular route completely. But uh, enjoy the views, guys. I mean, imagine flying this aircraft in VR because this very little of it around you and you're kind of sat inside it like really snug and I'd imagine in VR it's going to feel well, pretty amazing to say the least. Absolutely love the fact that wherever you fly in this sim it looks breathtaking. And again, I'm not listening to ATC. <laughs> So yeah, like the trees, they look so damn real to me. And in fact, just to let you guys know, I'll just show you my settings quickly, because I know I get asked this all the time and I do forget, but this is what I'm using at the moment, look. So pretty much everything, actually I've got uh, shadows on medium, that's the only thing I've got on medium and ambient occlusion. The rest of it is very nice and high indeed. All the important stuff, as I said before in a previous video, is on high or ultra. Like the terrain and buildings, trees, grass, volumetric clouds, all that stuff is on ultra. Object detail, very high. But things like shadows, I think they look great as they are and they do take quite a bit of processing. I'm happy to keep them on medium because I think it looks great. Bearing in mind guys, this is a sim that is set uh, to last us into the next decade. It has to be a little bit sort of more forward, more sort of um, future proof, shall I say. You can't just expect it to run completely smooth on modern hardware. Having said that though, generally speaking, I'm getting about 50 frames per second. At the moment I'm getting 60, uh, but then that's because of the area I'm in. It goes down to about 35, 40 on those settings if I'm in a really high-density populated area, say like uh, Charles de Gaulle or uh, 
Hampton. Which is fine. Uh, you know, I think this sim is incredibly well optimised, even at this early stage. It's going to get better and better. People are, who are concerned about running it in VR, well, don't worry, guys. Just stick your settings on medium. It's still going to look and feel like an incredibly, you know, next-gen sim. But the difference is you're going to have VR, so it will actually feel and look better than it would do on Ultra just using a flat screen. That's my thinking, anyway. Right. I think at this point we're going to start turning onto our heading here. Back in the mixture off a bit. We'll settle into this beautiful flight. You could be forgiven to think this is payware scenery. Absolutely. But look at those shadows, guys. That's on medium settings. That's still better than X-Plane's shadows on Ultra. Any of those people out there that think that uh, the flight model in this sim is gamey or that it flies on rails well look this is proof in itself i'm not doing anything i'm not adding any inputs to the uh, to my uh, yoke i'm moving around in the air very naturally and at the moment as we are heading over this sort of mountainside here i may get an updraft i may get a downdraft but i'll get a few bumps that's for sure i think I don't know what it is about some of the people in the flight sim community that think just because the sim looks this good and has a sort of emphasis on sort of Xbox Game Pass, and, you know, it's, it's catering for the masses that for some reason it's more gaming. There is that element to it to bring new people into the genre, which is absolutely fine in my opinion. The more people that are into flight simulation, the better it is for everyone. Look, wait a minute, you can see I'm getting a huge updraft there. Look at that, look at my vertical speed, 1,000 feet per minute updraft all within the sim itself. I don't need Active Sky here, I don't need any other plugins. That is absolutely just really, really uh, authentic and realistic and exactly how the weather will behave. Now I'm getting a slight downdraft as I'm passing this other ridge here. You have to be aware of these things and all this is within the sim itself. And that is far from what a game is all about, guys, seriously. And the flight models for stock aircraft, I remain and maintain to say that they are absolutely superb, they're really, really good. People are comparing these stock aircraft to payware uh, models that have been in X-Plane for years and years, and it's stupid. <laughs> Quite honestly, it's stupid. Harsh maybe, but that's just the way it is. Right, anyway, let's just enjoy the views here as we continue on our beautiful trip around Croatia. And actually, we're now into Bosnia, um, kind of uh, across the border here. Just look at the, the terrain, how it's quite scorched in places. It looks like a very hot place, which it is in real life, of course. But you've got these beautiful lush trees as well, so it's quite an unusual landscape. side now that's to that airport we're gonna head over these mountains and over the other side is that beautiful lake we could go round but it might be a bit of a ways round I think this aircraft has got enough power just <laughs> to get us over we're getting quite a nice amount of uh, ridge lift as well which is really helping okay, something you'd never say in any other sim unless it had an add-on like active sky Microsoft Flight Sim, get all this out of the box. Literally all of this that you're looking at now is stock. Pretty damn impressive. 
that is an absolutely stonking view right there. Oh, we're getting some turbulence here. In the real world, mountain flying is challenging, so it should be the same in a flight sim, and it certainly is now. We're really looking here to make sure that we uh, have got enough power just in that mixture, my goodness me, getting thrown around here. So we're only a little sort of carbon fibre aircraft, we don't weigh anything, so we'll get thrown around. Again, just imagine what it's going to be like in VR, it's going to be sublime, absolutely sublime. The question is, can we make it over this mountainside? We're about 13,000 feet now. So, uh, and the, I think the service ceiling of this aircraft is about 15, so I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to make this, to be honest. But we're going to give it a go anyway. Pushing this little, little plane to the limit. Why not? I don't think we've got any oxygen here either, so uh, if I start talking a bit strange, which I do anyway, but if I start acting even more weird than normal, you know why. I've been looking around now for a while. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give in simply because I'd hate to uh, explain to the authorities that I had to ditch my aircraft because uh, I ran out of fuel because I was looking for birds. That wouldn't really go down very well. So what we'll do is we'll head over in this direction here. There's an airfield. I can see the uh, lights blinking there. We'll land and then once we're all sorted, we'll get the drone up which I love to do anyway, to be fair, and we'll go and see if we can spot them that way, because that way we'll actually get a better view of them anyway. Well, I have to say, guys, from this, uh, I'll say brief flight, it actually hasn't, it's been about two hours, I didn't even realise it was that long. <laughs> uh, this is definitely one of my favourite aircraft of the fleet now, it just feels really nice. I don't understand why some of these things down here are in op. Um, I mean, there's hardly anything to simulate in this aircraft in terms of its system, so they could have just even made, made it click or something, you know, didn't have to have an actual action as such, but. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a number of aircraft actually that have in-op uh, systems at the moment. And it's causing some people to get a bit high rate about it. If you think about DCS, if you buy one of their early access aircraft for 60 quid or more, you know, like the Hornet and the F-16, a lot of things didn't work when it was first released. And it's taken them months and months and months to uh, get to that point kind of see that about this sim only that it's a lot cheaper <laughs> you know um, things I'm sure will be sorted eventually I'm pretty certain that uh, this is in beta stage at the moment and I don't think it was supposed to be released as uh, early as this but I think I don't know I've got a feeling because of all the announcements and everything that was made and I'm going in on the wrong the wrong one way here I think um, all the announcements and stuff that were made the discovery series people's hype was starting to get a bit tiresome and i feel they kind of missed the mark a little bit i think they should have probably announced it a bit later on and had say three or four months of hype but it's been like a year of hype and that hype will eventually dissipate and 
I think personally, I might be completely wrong that they were starting to get a bit worried about sort of you know that level of peak of hype and releasing it at the right time. And I think they did the right thing releasing it when they did, even if things aren't quite ready yet. I'm totally fine with that for God's sake. The sim is so beautiful and runs so well as it is. I didn't really want to wait any longer. But I think some people don't really see it from that point of view. They wanted it to be a completely polished sim straight out of the box, but that was never going to happen. Let me know, guys, what you think in the comments. If you completely disagree with me and think I'm talking out of crap, fair enough. <laughs> but that's my that's my take on it. Anyway. Just making a bit of a downwind. It's a very, very large airfield. This really, I feel a bit like I'm cheating this aircraft landing on such a ridiculously long runway. But never mind. This is the one available to us at this point in time. That looks like a grass strip over there, actually. But there is. Mixture is fully rich now. 50 kilometres an hour. What's that, about 70 mile an hour or something? Making a very tight base. We've got plenty of runway here. It's embarrassing how much runway we've got, to be honest. We're not going to use any flaps, that's for sure. Right, power coming down a bit. We're going to trim. Cessna Cytec trim wheel. Bit of a box approach here. Weather is beautiful today. We've only got like a five knot wind. I think it's straight down the runway as well, so we've got no excuses, or is it? That windsock tends to change as soon as you get nearby. No, in fact, actually, according to that, we're on the wrong runway. That's weird. Anyway, see? Bugs. <laughs> it's beta, guys. As far as I, I know, anyway. It's uh, it's certainly not sort of finished. In fact, it's not going to be finished. This sim is going to be a project, really. Oh, dear. That wasn't my best landing. I was too busy yapping away. Anyway, welcome to whatever this airport's called. Um, it's a really difficult name. Podrica, oh, okay. Yeah, I know where that is. Okay, that's fine. So, guys, what we're going to do, we'll park up. In fact, you know what? Let's just... Uh, we've got tundra tyres, for God's sake. We can. Uh, we don't need paved runways and taxiways. <laughs> Roger that. And I really like this view here for when you're taxiing. It's really good. Of course, in VR, we'll be able to sort of uh, crane our neck over and look left and right and do S-turns do things properly but VR is not here yet right over the uh, runway lights of course you don't you can't taxi this too quickly because you'll have you'll end up taking off again but the tail came up better if you noticed look at the buildings here look at those the balcony and everything it's uh, oh and there's even yeah the little umbrella there it's I really feel like I'm somewhere different now I love that about this sim, how you really feel like I haven't seen that building before because I'm in a different part of the world now. Like the buildings have, have got they're very worn down and sort of what you'd expect. That's fantastic. Anyway, let's park up here. This is so cool, isn't it? Mixture, uh, mags off. Switch this off. No, whoops, wrong one. It's weird because when they're in, they're off, and when they're out, they're on. It's a bit weird. And battery. So it turns out, guys, as I paid my landing fee, the guy in the tower is very kind. He said, yep, yeah, sure, you can fly your drone around this busy airport, no problem, which I thought was uh, really nice of him. And he let me know that the um, geese are in this area somewhere. And you know what, I can actually hear... I can actually hear the sound of the birds, and it's a different sound that I've... that I... from last time when I did this. 
So all we need to do now is spot them. But in the meantime, look at this beautiful scenery. And you can see here the masking of the rivers. It's really, really pay wear quality. You can hear the sound there of the river. I love the drone. It's it's a uh, feature that I think is fantastic and I use it a lot if I go to a new location. The drone is a fantastic way of exploring the area afterwards once you've landed. Now in case any of you are doing exactly this and you've been searching for hours, because they are quite hard to spot, especially the birds, there is a cheat way of doing things and I might as well show you. If you go to your assistant, uh, go to nav aid, navigation aids and you've got here fauna marker click that to on apply and now hopefully with a bit of luck we'll be able to spot them and there they are look there they are oh that is gorgeous look at that beautiful views and look, they, they are geese and they're kind of... I love how they follow each other and move around and the way that the animations are very convincing. Oh, that is beautiful. Screenshot time. And look at the, the way they're casting a shadow over the uh, river there as well. Oh, wow. Got really close to him this time as well. Look at that. Welcome to Bird Simulator 2020. It's funny, I'm, I'm more excited about seeing them in the sim than I would be if I saw them in real life. How pathetic is that? It's true. You know, it's only because it's the technology, isn't it, really? And it's something that we've never seen like this before. Anyway, guys, I think I probably should end this video here. So thank you so much for watching. This has been David Attenborough <laughs> in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you, uh, if you want more of these wildlife trips please let me know in the comments <laughs> and i'll see you again very soon bye bye for now now there's an evocative scene right there look at that as the sun sets you can see the moon beautiful